Well, we have had so much flooding that I am breaking it down. I am just doing Houston for this video. It is truly uh, remarkable. This is what has taken place in just 24 hours. So this collision, a collision, a towboat tugging two barges and an oil tanker, an oil tanker bust into the barge and it's leaking a chemical um, reformant for gasoline. Oh my god. Okay, so that's on the heels of all of the flooding. Plus, you had three fires at chemical plants in just the last like two months. Three fires, chemical plants that released a whole lot of toxic fumes. Now, you have these toxic fumes smelling like gasoline in the area that this uh, barge was hit. And um, the water, the waters there must be incredibly toxic because when I was just trying to do a little bit of research to find out about this uh, collision, I came across, I came across, like every year you've got collisions going on in the same place. Five years ago, Texas oil spill, 60 boats trapped as barge leaks into busy channel. Three years ago, barge catches fire after collision in Houston ship channel. Four years ago, collision on Houston Channel. You go through this and it's like, wow, okay, well, why aren't these uh, boats seeing one another and why can't they move away from one another? It's really hard to understand this kind of incompetence or these accidents the only way that I can understand it is that this is purposeful polluting the environment. A toxic gasoline product is leaking into the Houston ship channel after a ship collides with two barges. This crash happened around 3.30 this afternoon just east of Seabrook, but families living miles away, even as far as the Beltway and I-45, can smell it. Channel 2's Sophia Beausoleil has been speaking to people all night about air quality concerns. Sophia? Dominique, my photographer, Matt James, and I would be the first to tell you, when we were in Leak City, the odor was very, very strong. Leak City. They're in Leak City. And there's a leak. Okay. Strong. And people in that area, along with Kima, Clear Lake, Friendswood, and other surrounding communities, are echoing the same thing. Across Leak City. It's really bad. People have noticed a very strong odor. We were trying to figure out where the smell was coming from. I just pulled into uh, League City here, and first thing I thought when I stepped out was a heavy smell of gasoline. The United Are they not noticing the sky? Are they not noticing this? How unusual the sky looks? I guess not. Okay, well, yeah, it's uh, these fumes are uh, coming on land. The channel is shut down. This is now just standard affair. But you want to look at the national mainstream media news on this? Late this afternoon, two barges and an oil tanker collided in a shipping channel in Houston. One of the barges capsized after a hole opened up in its side. It was carrying about 25,000 barrels of a toxic chemical used to make gasoline. Some of that has spilled into the water. Bada boom. Okie dokie. Great reporting. All right. Um, it's, you know, how, how can this be going on all the time? 
if it's not purposeful. They can't seem to do anything right these days. Yeah, it's interesting. Manholes overflow across the city during heavy rain. Here, this whole broadcast is about, oh, the manholes. Look at all of the water shooting out. That's because you had such torrential rain, so many inches, and, well, your sewers in Houston can't handle it. So they're spewing out all of this water, or is something else going on? Rain also made quite a scene when it comes to storm drains. Look at that. Sewers across the city overflowing. Adam Bennett shows us this mess. The Buffalo Bayou downtown by U of H downtown, it's still a lot higher than normal. But the good news is it is well within its banks and it has been dropping all morning long. And now we are finally able to see some pieces of the walkway that goes through the park. Earlier this morning, though, this area was a mess. Several feet of water covered the on and off ramps overnight, connecting Travis and Milam streets with the I-45 North Freeway. A couple of drivers got stuck and they had to wade out with their belongings. Then later in the morning, a nearby block of Commerce Street was submerged. Water was gushing out of two manholes from the overwhelmed storm sewer system below. City crews have since fixed the issue. The manhole covers are back on as downtown Houston finally dries out. I still think that they are shutting down sewer drains to create that kind of flooding. Guys, the weather is not letting up at all, especially down south. There's torrential rain and flooding that's just beating up Texas and Louisiana. So I want to go to Maggie Ruley, who's in Houston, with more of the details. Maggie? Yeah, Kimberly, we are still dealing with that severe weather outbreak here in southern Texas and really across all of the southern plains. Uh, one of the major things we saw last night were lightning strikes. We were out driving around overnight all over Houston. Kimberly, the sky was absolutely lighting up with streaks of lightning nonstop. I mean, even during uh, some of our shots we were doing earlier this morning, there were lightning strikes behind me lighting up the sky. Uh, and to show you just how extremely dangerous this can be, if you looked at uh, all those flashing lights behind me, uh, there was a huge mansion back there. It was actually over a $2 million mansion here just outside Houston. It is completely gone now. It burned down overnight. Investigators believe one of those lightning strikes hit that house, causing it to burn down. They were not able to save it overnight. Uh, so this is something that uh, people are very concerned about. Again, that happened throughout the night into the early morning hours. So on top of all of that lightning and severe weather, the other thing we're obviously dealing with here, Kimberly, is this rain. It is coming down nonstop. It started uh, last night, maybe around 10 p.m. local time. They don't really expect it to let up anytime soon. It has just been raining and raining and raining. Now, remember, Kimberly, this is on top of all that rain we already had earlier this week. So many areas seeing around 10 inches of rain uh, just about Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. That's when we first got here. Uh, it hasn't you know, let up a little bit in the middle of the week, but bands of storms have continued to come in ever since then. And last night, some areas saw, again, heavy rain follow up to three inches of rain per hour. That is causing a lot of stress here on the drainage systems. Um, so flooding and flash flooding, another major concern. The local stations here kept saying, remind people, do not go out in this. Do not drive in this weather if you do not have to. All right. Um, and there were more flash flood warnings for Houston and the surrounding area. I really... You guys in the Houston area, you did have a torrential downpour. Did it last for hours and hours and hours, uh, which would make sense to create that kind of flooding where you see people walking through water up to even past their waist? Have you never had torrential downpours in Texas? Of course you have. Are these so um, different that it would cause that? like drainage problems all over South Texas. House floods four times in four years.
speaking with county leaders to see what can be done. When you oh, build sorry. that high. Four times in four years. That's how many times homes in one Fort Bend County neighborhood have flooded. And as Frank mentioned earlier, we're in store for more rain tomorrow. Channel 2's Jonathan Martinez joining us live in Richmond tonight with what some are blaming for the recent flooding. Jonathan? Yeah, Bill, and if you take a drive down this street, you will quickly find lots of piles of debris similar to this one here. All of it pulled out of these homes. These families left devastated after being flooded out yet again. Water was going inside the house like a river, like a river. From the front door of a Richmond home to throughout the house, Maria Jalou takes us on a tour of all of the damage left behind from the recent floodwaters. Oh, after several inches of rain recently came down in a matter of hours, several inches also made its way inside. We were trying like just to stay calm because there's nothing that we can do. The water line is still visible throughout the house, but it seems far from a home now with everything from furniture to appliances now gone. I'm just trying to get myself together. Sadly, it's the fourth time they've experienced a major flood event since 2015, including the Memorial Day floods, Tax Day, and Hurricane Harvey. Start from zero again, uh, start fixing the house, uh, start buying furniture. It's, it's like a nightmare. Everything was wet, so we had to take it off. It's the same story just next door at Dahlia Vargas's home that also took on water. I'm done. I mean, I can't keep doing it and doing this anymore. She believes new development in the area has led to worse flooding oh, oh, oh. and is speaking with county leaders to see what can be done. When you build that high, what happens? The water gushes. Although the water has gone down for now, still many families living along this street say they remain worried about future flooding. All that we're inside is it will take a while. We're just trying to figure it out. What are we going to do day by day? Uh, this is not making sense to me that there was that much rain and suddenly it's just pouring into people's homes. People had two feet of water in their home just from this rain. It's so unbelievable. It is just so unbelievable what is taking place. It's stranded from Florida Bluff residents in their homes. They live in the Oak Ridge Drive area. That neighborhood is behind Florida Bluff Junior High School. People who live there say their flooding problems aren't entirely caused by Mother Nature. Two Six News reporter Jeremiah Marshall joins us now live in the studio with the details on this, Jeremiah. Katya, Jeff Wilder told me he's about six feet tall, and when he went outside to his backyard, the floodwaters came above his waist. He said he's had flooding before, but he says not this bad. This video captured by Oak Ridge resident Jeff Wilder shows the aftermath of the latest heavy rain. The flooded streets and yards are a shocking scene, but it's no surprise for Wilder. I actually knew it was going to happen. This isn't a first time event. Uh, anytime we even get an inch and a half, two inches of rain, this, this is what happened. Walter says flooding has gotten worse since these new buildings at the Flower Bluff Junior High School were built. They sit on a slope that now sends any rain downhill towards his neighborhood. West, from the east, everything slopes down towards my house. And anytime we get any rain at all now, it ends up in my yard and this it's a river. I mean, absolute river through my yard. A spokesperson for the Flower Bluff Independent School District says they are aware of standing water and that it should be expected from this morning's heavy rain. But FBISD also say all district construction is designed and engineered for proper drainage. Walter says the water that flows downhill sometimes has nowhere to go because of debris that covers the drains. Uh, if it gets on top of that culvert, that's it. The water stops draining. And it's not much of a drain, but it's all we have. Walter calls this a frustrating and scary situation. He says we'd like to see a situation soon. Katya. Well, there's a lot of people who would like things to be rectified and nothing seems to be uh, getting rectified. Neighbors here in Fox Chase neighborhood are banding together to clean up the damage left behind by the floodwaters. There was more than 12 inches here. It's going to get fixed. It's going to get cleaned up and get fixed. Words of comfort from a friend after more than a foot and a half of water pours into Melissa Hoff's home. we got to pull the carpet up. we got to get new furniture, you know, pull the drywall out, make sure it's 
dries out all the way, so we don't have any mold issues, but we'll be able to rebuild and we'll be okay. You know, just got to lean on God. Around four this morning, she got a knock on the door from a neighbor, checking in on her and her family. We had about an inch in the, in the foyer at that time, so we started going into full speed mode, get everything off the floor, off the floor that we could, and within an hour we were walking about knee deep water. She's only lived in the house for seven months and was told flooding wouldn't be an issue. We were told that the the problem had been taken care of and apparently it hasn't. This isn't the first time Fox Chase has flooded. Once again, neighbors and Bossier Sheriff deputies come to the rescue. It always happens here. Get a downpour of rain, it's always this neighborhood floods. I mean, wherever I'm at, as soon as I see it's raining and halting, I cringe, I know, well, my house is gone again. Now neighbors are preparing for what's to come in the next couple of days. Reporting from Fox Chase Neighborhood. All right, so more flooding in the next couple of days. This has been going on for how long in Houston? Certainly at least a week, maybe 10 days. Neighborhoods getting flooded out. How many homes now? I would venture to say it's over 1,000 homes that have been flooded from just rain. Now you don't need any hurricanes. They're doing it. And I do believe that in part they are using the sewers to create this flooding. Now, of course, I will end with this weather modification technology, decades of ever increasing tempo. For those of you who don't know much about weather modification, you might want to read this article. But it's happening. And it's destroying people. All links are below. But please, you guys in Houston, uh, or just South Texas, were the rains that intense to have a foot of water in homes to have this kind of flooding that we are seeing or is something else happening? Stay safe everybody.